Okay, here we are with the New York State reference table R, known as organic functional groups. This is part of the organic unit, and this is used for several purposes. One is to just classify what type of organic compound that you have. Another would be to possibly draw out the structure for an organic compound that contains one of these groups. And the other would be you're given the structure and you need to name it. Now, along with reference table R, don't forget you also have reference tables P and Q. Uh, reference table P are your prefixes for the number of carbon atoms and what would be used in the name. And then, of course, reference table Q is hydrocarbons. That means the different types of compounds, well, really just three classes, alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, that involve carbon and hydrogen atoms only. With reference table R, when we go through this, my suggestion is to have your copy of the reference tables opened up to page eight, and you are gonna mark it up along with me marking it up here in the video so that it will be easier for you to answer organic questions with the marked up table. Let's get started. Alrighty, these are, you can already tell other atoms besides carbon and hydrogen on the molecule and we're just gonna literally go down the list. So a halide means that you have a halogen on the molecule, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine, and you'll notice that there are words or prefixes that you would use for these substitutions. So instead of a hydrogen, you might have one or more of these halogens on a molecule, and there's always an example that's given, and you can use that to your advantage, of course, when you're working through questions. Uh, halogens can be on the middle or end of the molecule. They can be anywhere. What I'd like you to write is both, meaning that they can be located anywhere on a molecule. And depending on where they are, you are going to put the number. So the prefix and the number. The propane gives me the carbon chain. And then the substitution of hydrogen by one of these halogens would be a prefix. The more halogens you have, of course, the um, more prefixes you would need, depending on if it's different halogens. And then, of course, if I'd had more than one chlorine on the molecule, I'd need the number. And then the prefix di, or if it's three, it would be tri. All right, let's move on. Now, the most confusing, I believe, to students is when you have oxygen on the molecule, because we're dealing with alcohols here through esters. Now, there is a difference. Alcohol, ethers, aldehydes, and ketones, you have one oxygen. For organic acids and esters, it's two oxygens. So right away, you need to figure out, do I have one or do I have two? And that is then going to determine where you're looking. Too many times, students don't take literally the time <laughs> to go through this. All right, so alcohols. You'll notice the OL ending for alcohol is the ending now in our name for the molecule. An alcohol is an OH group. And here you see, again, you need the number to locate where this OH has substituted for an H. For alcohols, the OH group can be on the end or in the middle of the molecule. So again, as far as location, it could be both on the end or in the middle. So that's this column, column here. I made up is for location. Alrighty. For an ether, you'll notice that you have a group here where you have one oxygen, but that oxygen is part of the chain. You have to have a carbon on each side. And before I forget, the letter R, R stands for what's called radical, meaning it's a wild card. It can mean any group of carbons and hydrogens, and you'll see. There's a little footnote here at the bottom. The word ether is in the name of the molecule, and then you deal with branches on either side of the oxygen. 
the one carbon is methyl, two carbons is ethyl, so this is methyl, ethyl, ether. So again, for ether, we're dealing with the middle of the molecule for oxygen. We go to aldehyde. Now there is a link between aldehydes and ketones because in both cases, I'm dealing with carbon double bonding with oxygen, but there is a difference. For an aldehyde, my carbon oxygen double bond is always on the end of a molecule, and for a ketone, it's always in the middle. For aldehydes, the AL is part of the ending, so AL is totally different than OL, that was an alcohol. And then for ketones, the O-N-E ending tells you it's a ketone. And depending on the number of carbons, you might have to start using numbers here to show where the C double bond O is, starting with five carbons here, pentanone, because I could have an isomer of two pentanone that's known as three pentanone. I don't need the numbers for an aldehyde because it's always on the end. So it's always on the first carbon. So when the information is already given in the name, you don't add an extra number. All right, now we're dealing with two oxygens. The first of the two are for acids, and just like ether, the word acid is in the name. These are organic acids, they are all weak acids. Um, so this is propanoic because you're dealing with three carbons. Ethanoic acid, which is known as acetic acid, is also listed on the common acid reference table here in, uh, in this packet. Uh, you're dealing with C double bonding to O and an OH. This is always on the end of the molecule. Another thing I do want to point out, and let me go back here. I'm going to change my color so that you can see this. What we have here in our examples are known as condensed structural formulas. All they've done is they've collapsed the bonds around the carbons. Uh, for an alcohol, it's an OH group. Don't confuse alcohols with bases. Remember, if I have a metal and OH, I have a base, like a sodium hydroxide um, or a calcium hydroxide. Alcohols are carbons, hydrogens, and OH. Totally different groups of compounds, totally different properties. Again, ethers are in the middle. Aldehydes are on the end. Now, they didn't totally give you the condensed formula here. So your C double bond OH, you don't want to have it as COH because that would be an alcohol. So you might see it written as CH and an O. Okay. For your ketone to totally collapse here to get the, um, the condensed formula, it would just be CO. And then for an acid, and you see this a lot with acids, and that's what prompted me to do this. You're going to see C, um, I'm sorry, not double bond O. You're going to see COOH. That's your condensed formula for an organic acid. For esters, now with esters, you have a C double bond O and another O. The condensed functional group would be C. O and O, and then a dash for the rest of the molecule, and of course, two oxygen atoms. So it's similar to organic acids, except now this would be in the middle of the molecule. And then you have the last two, an amine is you have one nitrogen. Well, it doesn't look like N, but it's nitrogen right here. And that nitrogen can be bonded to hydrogens and or carbons and hydrogens, so it could be both on the middle of the, or in the middle of the molecule or on the end, and then your amide is one nitrogen and one oxygen, and this primarily, again, you, you see it here with H's, but those could be carbons and H's as well, so it's both. I think with maybe a little more neatly than me marking up your table, is going to help you as far as answering all the questions when it comes to organic chemistry and anything other than carbons and hydrogens on the molecule. Please refer to this reference table when you do come across those questions and you need to practice. I'm going to put up another video where we practice recognizing functional groups, 
and then of course either drawing the structures from the name or naming them. Keep working hard. Good luck.